Hello, and welcome to the third video in the CAD YouTube series created and hosted by Team Ultra 10539. In today's Fusion 360 tutorial, we will be concluding the CAD series by discussing how to um, assemble the parts that you can find online um, that represent the parts that you can use on your actual robot in order to create something that looks a little bit like your actual robot. By the end of this video, you'll hopefully have um, a basic drivetrain CAD uh, completed and um, hopefully from there, you'll be able to um, create your own mechanisms uh, that are specific to the challenge that you'll have in that specific year. So um, to get started today, um, from our last video, we had our sort of basic drivetrain and we're gonna be doing something very similar in terms of how we're going to design this, this particular drivetrain um, in terms of the same shape. Um, so the first thing we actually need to do today uh, is we need to actually go grab the parts that we're going to need in order to build this uh, device. Since obviously we don't want to create all the parts ourselves as that will take much too long. So the place that you actually go in order to find the parts that you would like to use in your robot CAD is actually the website where you would buy the parts traditionally. So if you're using Rev parts, for example, you would go to revrobotics.com. So all you need to do is go to the Rev website. and you need to search whatever kind of part you're using. So we're gonna build this particular drivetrain out of extrusions and Rev parts uh, specifically. So all you need to do is you can go to Rev Robotics or Andy Mark uh, for specifically whatever kind of parts you're looking for. Uh, Tetrix also has this on their website, as well as Actobotics. So whatever system you're using, this will work for any of them. Um, but for this particular tutorial, we're just going to focus on Rev. So what you want to do is you want to search for whatever kind of part you're looking for. In my case, I'm looking for an extrusion. So I have search extrusion, um, and I can click on the 15 millimeter extrusion. And the file you want is actually at the bottom of the page, usually. Um, and Rev websites all the way at the bottom. You want the step file. Uh, Any mark also has it similar. You want the dot step file for whichever one you're looking for. Um, so you want to click this, um, and it will download. Um, and once you have it downloaded, what you want to do is you want to go into Fusion 360, um, and you want to uh, open whatever folder you want to upload it into. Click this little upload button. Um, select the file that you just downloaded, and press open. And then all you need to do is click upload. And Fusion 360 will do all the work for you, and it will be uploaded into your uh, file here. So um, once it's done uploading, hopefully, um, you all you'll have to do is if you open the, the file that you just downloaded, you'll notice that you now have an extrusion that you can actually look at um, in your uh, CAD video. Now, in your CAD view. Now, obviously, um, this 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 is not that useful. It's really really long. Um, and it can't use it in this form. So what you want to do is you want to uh, use it um, inside your design. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new design, um, so a new blank design. And what I can do is I can now insert that part I just downloaded from the internet into my design. As you can see here, I have a whole bunch of other stuff. We'll sh I'll show you how to download all of those afterwards. But um, what, do you, what you do is all you do is you right click it, press insert into current design, um, and it will probably use this error that says, please save the design before it's for inserting components, all you have to do is press Control S or save or whatever file save. Um, just save it as, a, I don't know, a, a new drivetrain. Um, we'll just press save on that. Um, and then we can try again and press insert to current design. And this time you'll notice that it will show up in our design. So all I need to do now is press OK. And I will now have this in my design. Now, this is obviously too long. And we don't want to use this because it's meter long. That's bigger than anything we can have on our robot. So we need to cut it to the size that we want. So since this is uh, in millimeters, I don't really want to change the units to inches in this case because um, these parts that we're using in Rev are based in millimeters, so it's much easier to just stick with millimeters. Um, but that just means you just have to do a little bit of conversion. So the if we want to have a 17 inch long extrusion, it's something like 430 millimeters. So I'm just going to um, change the size of this to be exactly 431 millimeters or something like that. Um, now, here's the thing. I can't just go go ahead and extrude it like I did in previous uh, sections where I could just like click the face at the top up here um, and then press extrude like I did in all the previous tutorials. I can't do that this time around. Why? Because this extrusion is linked to the original design that we downloaded. So what we need to do is we need to break that link first. If we edit it now, what's going to happen is that original design we downloaded is now going to be changed, and therefore you won't be able to use it again. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you edit this or that you, you delete, delete the link between this and the original design. 
You would want to keep this link if you had sub assemblies, but in this case, since we're going to be using this part and modifying it for every single specific use case, we want to break this link. So all you want to do in order to do this is right click on the rev extrusion one meter, which is in this, this browser section here over here under new, new drivetrain. Now all you want to do is press break link and you'll notice the little link icon that was here before is now gone. Um, and that's a good thing. As long as that's the case, then you're ready to move on to the next step. So once you have done that, now what you need to do is you need to uh, use the extrude tool. And since this is, uh, we, all we need to do is select the space up here. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to subtract. Um, we want to cut off enough such that we have 430 millimeters left. So what we want to do um, is we want to cut off um, we want to cut off uh, so, so about half of this, so such that we have 430 millimeters left. So um, I want to cut off about um, 570 70 millimeters, such that we have um, 430 left. Um, and hopefully, I did the math right, because I can't do addition and subtraction as usual. <laughs> so hopefully, um, we now have the right length thing. So let's measure it, and make sure. Yeah, it's exactly 430 millimeters. Um, so now, this extrusion is not properly oriented, though. So it's not really that useful to us in this particular orientation. So all we need to do is click on it again, right click it, press Move Copy. And then you can see how there are these sort of rings that pop up here. We can drag it in any direction or whatever. But we also have these rings. And these rings allow us to rotate things. So now we can rotate it. So it's 90 degrees. And now it's parallel to the ground. So now we have an extrusion that is lying on the ground. Um, so now, in order to um, sort of Make this into a full drivetrain, we want to have more than just one extrusion. Obviously, we need four so that we can make a full square. So what we want to do is we can just make a copy of this. Um, and the way we do this is we right click it again, press move copy. Now you'll notice on this thing that pops up on the side, there's this little box that's create copy. We just want to check that box. And now you'll notice that when I drag it, there's a second one that popped up. So once I've done this, I can press OK. And now we're going to use the joint method that we used in the last tutorial to attach those wheels to the drivetrain. Except now we're going to be using it to attach these extrusions together. So we're going to click here, join, and we're going to want to find two points on which we want to join. So for example, on this particular extrusion, I'm going to pick the one on the end over here. I'm going to pick this particular point right here. And you'll see why I'm picking this point in just a second. Now, if I want to attach it to this extrusion, I want it to be perpendicular to this extrusion on this side. So now if I want to attach it there, then all I would need to do is select this particular point, and then the extrusions will be mounted perfectly to each other. So now the extrusions are mounted in a perfect perpendicular arrangement. As you can see, if we look from the top down, it's a perfect 90 degree angle. Now, all we need to do is do that again for the other two sides. So again, you right click it, press Move Copy, press the Create Copy box, move it over here, and then press OK. And all we need to do now is navigate over here and again, create a little joint. So we're going to click here, click this particular point over here this time, because you want to make sure that they line up perfectly. The joint always joins the two circles that you select directly to each other. So if I select that particular point over there, I need to select this particular point here, such that the two extrusions join together perfectly. I press OK. And again, I now have my extrusions joined. And now I just need to do the same thing. So last extrusion, press Move Copy, check the Create Copy box, move it over, and then do the join again. So this time I will. But this time, I will only do it on one side, because the other side is just redundant, because we don't need to have four joints. We just need to have three, such that they are all attached to each other. So I'll do one joint there. Actually, no, that's not correct. I need to do one joint on this particular point. We want it to be on the edge, such that they will line up pro properly. Um, so this particular point is the one we want, not that one. We want it to be flat like that. And now we need to do the same thing on this one, we just select the other point over here, which is over here. And press OK. We now have our square from which we can construct our drivetrain. So once we have, we, I would, I'm not going to join this fourth point over here because it's redundant and I just don't need to. Um, I, I mean, I could, but I just don't see why I should. So I'm just not going to because it's not really necessary. The, it will function as normal, just like this. So now if I want to attach, um, for example, a wheel to this, well, the way that I would need to do that in real life is I would need to 
put a bracket on first, then I would need to attach the axle, and then I would have to put the wheel on. So I'm gonna do all three of those things in CAD right now. So the way that I would do this is, firstly, I would need to actually go get the wheel that I want to use um, on my robot from the website. So maybe I want to use uh, an Andy Mark, uh, Andy Mark Stealth wheel, for example. So um, we can search it on Andy Mark's website and we can get one of these guys. So like the traditional FTC wheels that we always use um, and make sure that we download the correct step file. So, so you notice down here, it says CAD file. We want to download this. And once it's downloaded, that's fine. And then we also need some brackets. So we need the, um, the Rev 15 millimeter pillow, pillow block. Um, so this would be the particular part that I would use for this particular case and download this particular step file. And we also need an axle. Um, so we can download the um, small um, hex, hex axle so that we can use that for our design. So now we have downloaded these three things. Again, we just upload them into our Fusion 360. Um, press the little upload button, select files. I'm just going to select all three of them at the same time, press open, and then press upload. And then all it will do is it will upload them automatically. So um, once those are done, um, you will have this piece here, which will be the pill block that we downloaded. Um, we will have the axle, which we also downloaded, which looks like this. And we will also have, finally, um, when it loads, hopefully, um, uh, it's still loading, I see. Um, we will also have the wheel once it finishes downloading. So um, in the meantime, let us try attaching the, uh, while it finishes uploading, we'll, we'll try attaching this pillow block. So what we want to do again is insert into our current design. And we can kind of just place it anywhere because we're just going to create a joint, place it in the right spot. So for this one, we're just going to press new joint. We're going to select um, one of the points on the bottom. So this one, because it lines up with the points, so we can easily click on the extrusion. And we want to attach it to the bottom of our extrusion. So we can um, go to the bottom view um, and maybe select this point over here. Now, once we've done that, we notice that's not in the correct orientation. So all we need to do now is make sure that we orient it correctly um, by orienting it like this, with 270 degrees. And then we'll look at the camera from the bottom to make sure we line it up exactly right. Now, obviously, we wouldn't want to have it just right here on the end. Probably want to hit offset it a bit. So we'll offset it by 60 millimeters, such that it's a little bit more towards the center of the robot. Now, if we wanted to um, insert our wheel now, or our axle, which is the next part, you would just click on the axle, right click on the axle, press insert into current design, and again, do the exact same thing. Um, we just create another joint. We select the top of the axle, such that it is the center of the circle. And then we want to select this hole over here where the axle is going to go inside of the pill block. And we want to make sure that we select a rotational joint um, on the motion tab over here, such that we know that it's an axle and we can press. Uh, then we want to make sure that we set the positioning correctly such that the wheel will actually fit. And we can press OK. And now we have our axle on our, uh, on our block, on our pillow block that will allow it to be mounted. Now, finally, um, we can attach our wheel. Um, so hopefully this one has finished loading. Um, and we can now see that we have our wheel um, in our CAD, which looks exactly like the real thing. Um, so now what we can do is we can go back to our um, drivetrain, can right click and press insert into current design. Um, and again, we can just press OK. And what we're going to do again is just create another joint, select the center of the wheel again, and select the center of the axle, and they will line up perfectly. And again, it knows it's a rotational joint. And what we need to do now is just line it up correctly such that the wheel is properly on the axle. Um, and if we look at it from the top, we can make sure we line it up right, press OK. And now we have a wheel on our axle. Now, you'll notice that something weird happened. This kind of didn't move along with the wheel. Um, and that happens sometimes because the, sometimes the CAD files are created with multiple parts. So the way that we fix this is we undo what we just did. So I'm just going to press uh, undo over here. Um, and what we need to do first in order to make sure that this actually doesn't happen is we need to right click this. We need to press rigid group. Now, this error warning will pop up. And all we just need to do is click capture position. And then we just need to press um, this little thing will pop up over here. And all we need to do is press OK. And once we have done that, 
this part should now remain uh, together when we create the joint. So if I now select this circle and select this point over here, and now press and move it offset it a little bit such that it is in the right spot, and now I press OK, we'll notice that the entire wheel has moved this time rather than just the inside. And that's because we created a rigid group, which means that all the parts will move together when we do this. So now if you want to make this into a full drivetrain, which I'm not going to do in this video because it's going to get too long, um, is you would just do this for all four of your wheels. So hopefully you can apply this to some of the other mechanisms um, that are can be used in FTC. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, please just let us know. Email us at culturedbrowning.edu or leave your question in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching.